time for a new case and I'll set it up for you. This is a 49 year old male, 60 hours post operative heart transplant. He was extubated only 10 to 12 hours after his surgery. Despite appropriate care in the last 24 hours, the patient has suffered a declining SpO2, increased dyspnea. In your shift report, you're told that currently the patient is tolerating BiPAP poorly. He's very anxious with settings of 100% FiO2 and 15 over 5 pressures. SpO2 is only 87%, breath sounds or crackles, heart rate 122, BP stable, and the patient's temperature is normal. Obviously, this patient's condition is declining rapidly. A pulmonary physician is called in by the surgeon, and the decision is made to intubate and ventilate. Respiratory therapy is here to assist. Now you can take part in the decision making on how to treat this patient. Now, hopefully you've already done the head injury first so that you're familiar with the, uh, the machine or the uh, vent simulator. To find it, simply go to RT Connection, that's www.rtconnection.org, and click on the button Students. You see it's uh, highlighted there or circled there. Click on that and you'll see this page. There's the Avia Vent Simulator right under the alveoli. You can click on that. Put in some settings for this patient and then come back when you're done. and We can compare with what a group of students has done. Here's what the spreadsheet looks like when you download it and open it. I had a group of the Collin County students do this. Uh, there were a group of five and they got to collaborate on the settings such as the rate, title, volume, uh, FiO2, and PEEP. And here's what they came up with. Oh yes, and before I forget, there's a tiny drop-down box, a uh, drop-down list box at the top. Change that from head injury to ARDS. By the way, I told them that the patient was six, uh, 75 kilos, and they chose uh, something like eight times that for their volume, which the MBRC recommends eight to 12. They had arbitrarily decided on a rate of 10, five of PEEP, and 100% since that's what the patient was on already. Now, the first problem we encountered was, if you'll notice on the top of this uh, grid where it says alarms, it says high P peak. Now unfortunately this device or this version, version 2.1, doesn't alarm. Maybe it will in the future, but that was a problem. I said you have a high peak alarm and you have to deal with that immediately. After a couple of minutes they realized they had to go to their alarm settings. As you can see here the default alarm setting for high pressure shown in the white is 40 and so obviously that was going to need and they did. They changed the alarm to 55 high peak, a uh, P peak or high pressure. Um, and we went back to our monitoring screen. Now you can see that we're returning uh, 550 tidal volume. That would be the fourth square from the left on the top row there. Uh, 550 out of 600. So we're only leaking a little bit. That's acceptable. Uh, before we were terminating at 400 when it was high pressure limiting at uh, 40. Uh, our peak pressure is 47, uh, plateau pressure is 43, mean of 14. We have a compliance of 16 right now, 9 of airways resistance, uh, 1 to 4 IE ratio, 5 of PEEP, 100% uh, FO2. Now immediately the students noticed the second biggest problem and that, that is on our blood gas, our SATs are only 77%. Uh, of course, that has to be dealt with, and the students knew, rightly, that uh, it was going to take PEEP to deal with that. The students knew, of course, that PEEP is indicated when the PO2 is less than 60 on greater than 50 or 60 percent. So they added another 5 of PEEP, uh, bringing the PEEP up to 10, and now that has helped quite a bit, really. Our SATs are now at 90 percent, and we can turn our focus to something else for a moment. And of course the problem that we have next is uh, if we were to get a blood gas is to see that our pH is only 7.12. We have a, a significant respiratory acidosis with a CO2 of 75. Of course this has to be brought down 
and uh, if you've seen my video on uh, ABG and uh, CO2, then you know what to do. Increase the minute ventilation. These smart students, of course, knew that and increased the rate to 18, giving us a minute ventilation of 12.6 and uh, success. We have a PCO2 of 44, pH is 7.37, and an oxygen uh, that's barely in range. Uh, we'll probably have to do something with that later, but for right now, they felt pretty good about themselves. But I brought up one major issue. Well, first thing uh, is we have a IE ratio that's less than 1 to 2, and we need to fix that. As you can see, we turned our peak flow up to 60 and have greater than a 1 to 2, 1 to 3.4. That gives the patient plenty of time to expire. The second thing that I pointed out to them is something that uh, we've known or the medical community has known since the early 90s, uh, maybe 87, uh, some landmark studies done in journals like the uh, New England Journal of Medicine that said basically that uh, if your plateau pressure was over a certain point, then uh, certain forces will be applied upon the alveol of the lung, uh, inflammatory mediators are released, and uh, organ failure may occur. And this may account for uh, the reason that there's 50% mortality rate in ARDS. So, what is that number? What do we have to get our plateau below? Well, the number generally accepted is between 30 and 35. So I said, your next task is to get that plateau pressure below 35. And uh, after playing around with different things, they realized really the only two things that had any effect on it were the volume, because that's the pressure that's exerted when the volume's pumped in the lungs and held there, and the PEEP. But first, the students felt a need to uh, wean the patient off toxic level, level of oxygen and wean the patient to 85%. And that was a good move since it uh, maintained the same SAT of 90%. Leaving the PEEP where it was, the students decided to lower the tidal volume. And it turned out that a tidal volume of 500, dropping it from 750 to 500, had good success in lowering the peak or the plateau pressure below 34 uh, however, the patient became acidotic and they uh, were able to turn the rate up to uh, 26. When they tried 28, I think our mean airway pressure went up high enough that the patient became hypotensive uh, without much uh, change in uh, CO2. So they uh, decided on a uh, CO2 of 47 at a rate of 26. In an effort to improve oxygenation beyond... Um, just 90%, the students suggested turning the PEEP up by another 5 to 15. Great suggestion, except for one thing. Uh, compliance worsened slightly. You might notice that compliance changed uh, dramatically from a PEEP of 5 to a PEEP of uh, 10. Uh, one of the ways that you know best PEEP is the best compliance, best oxygenation, without the side effects of uh, hypotension from uh, in, uh, cardiac embarrassment or uh, venous return that's been slowed down. This next slide shows the hypotension up in the top right hand corner above the grid. It says warning patient hypotensive that occurred when we turned our rate up to uh, 28 and our mean airway pressure went up to 30. Um, this also happened when we tried to turn our PEEP up any higher. The patient became hypotensive. That's uh, something that you just can't have, and so it had to be corrected. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I have a couple of important lessons here. The first is the importance of the plateau pressure and how it takes a low tidal volume, tidal volume strategy to achieve that, even if that means uh, messing up your blood gas. And the second is the importance of finding the best PEEP. Okay, see you next time when we uh, try inverse ratio pressure control.